This is ABC 15 Mornings. Now at six, an arrest made in an investigation that we have been following closely. And now for the first time, we're hearing from the family of a Valley teen shot by a customer while on the clock at Wendy's. And COVID cases, they are surging and nearly every industry is feeling it. We're breaking down the impacts and the new guidelines coming up. Also, it is win or go home for the Arizona Cardinals getting ready for the playoffs. And for a lot of guys, this is their first postseason ever. So we're taking an inside look at how the team's veterans are trying to keep everybody locked in. Got to get those nerves of steel and overcome the excitement. We all have to do it, so we'll hear what they're doing. We say good Saturday morning to you. I'm Nohe Lani Graf as we give you a live view of the lights over the city of Phoenix this morning. And I'm Mark Thompson uh, up in my perch this morning. We are now uh, putting our social distancing rules back into effect, at least for the moment. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. I've got a question for all the folks out there. Mm. Uh, do you still have your Christmas tree up? <laughs> no, I do it's, not. It's because to that time. It where, is getting to yeah, that time. The motivation, <laughs> the motivation was the, um, the recycle date ending, yeah. so we had to get it down. Uh, and so now my car is full of needles. So that's, <laughs> that's what it's like. And that's I am right. sure I am not in this boat alone. No. I'm sure a lot of other folks are out there too. So maybe you'll be motivated. Now is the time to get it moving as we start to move on to the next holiday, Martin Luther King Jr. holiday mm -hmm. on Monday. A lot of folks have the day off work, so it's a three day weekend for them. Going to be gorgeous conditions. We're going to be in the 70s all weekend long. The big talker today, though, will be the winds. So hopefully you've at least gotten the decorations taken down outside because it is going to be windy out there right now. 57 degrees, so really mild start to the morning. Breezes are just around seven miles an hour here in the valley, but they're already stronger up north today and tomorrow. We're going to see highs in the low 70s, 72 degrees with partly cloudy skies. So I will walk you through this forecast, show you how we get there hour by hour, uh, because I know we have a lot of events happening around the valley as well. So I'll show you coming up in that full most accurate forecast. All right. No, hey, thank you. Breaking right now. We want to take you out live. Uh, this is a look you're about to see here of a car that crashed into a building. This is at 11th Street and Indian School Road. One person was arrested on scene and another was taken to the hospital. It's unclear what led up to uh, their injuries. And at this point, uh, we're still waiting on updates from police. You can see there, though, just look at the aftermath there. That's a wheel that appears to be in a tree. So definitely uh, more behind this one and we are going to pass along any updates once we get them in. Also breaking overnight shots fired in a crowded Peoria bar. This happening around one this morning at the, the game time bar and grill. This is near 67th and Olive Avenue. But luckily police telling us no one was injured in all of this. Really incredible and fortunate witnesses telling our photographer that a fight broke out on the dance floor and then that's when shots were fired. No arrests have been made as of yet. Now an arrest has been made overnight, in fact, in a case that we've been following for several days now. 27-year-old Theodis Polk is now charged with shooting a teenager who was working at a Phoenix Wendy's near 19th Avenue in Glendale. And now the teen's parents are speaking out, telling us that 16-year-old Brian Durham Jr., was shot in the head, had to go through surgery. They say he started working to help take care of his mother and siblings. Police tell us this started as an argument over an order when the customer, Polk, pulled a handgun out and fired allegedly through the drive through window. And I guess it was a confrontation between two other people and he was like the, the register man, so he was stuck in the middle. He had a bullet that just nipped his brain. Police not saying where they found the suspect after that day's long search. A fugitive accused of escaping a Colorado prison, then shooting a police officer in New Mexico, is now waking up in an Arizona jail. Phoenix police arrested Elias Buck at a quick trip near Northern Avenue and 27th overnight. Police in Farmington, New Mexico, say that Buck shot an officer last Friday. That officer is expected to recover. The police chief in Farmington was surprised to learn how police in Phoenix made the arrest. I would, really wouldn't have even thought in in Phoenix that our incident would have played, but um, somebody called in a tip to them 
And, you know, honestly, in the middle of the night, while all of us were asleep, Phoenix police officers were scrambling out there to make an arrest on a dangerous guy that had already shot a cop. New Mexico officials, they are expected to, they expect that suspect to face multiple charges there. And charges also may be coming on the federal level as well. Now we want to get to your morning headlines. A tsunami hitting Tonga overnight, sending waves into the capital there. It was caused by a massive underwater volcano that erupted, and it could even be seen on satellite imagery. Tsunami warnings were also issued for Fiji, American Samoa, but those have now been downgraded. The extent of the damage in Tonga is still unclear. That's the satellite image. Ooh, and that underwater volcano right Man, there. That's incredible. CVS and Walgreens announcing they are shutting down some pharmacies on weekends moving forward. We asked the companies which Arizona stores will be impacted, but we haven't been provided with those specifics. A massive chemical fire is burning in New Jersey. This started overnight at a warehouse just north of Newark. Officials telling everyone who lives nearby to keep their windows closed. The good news here, the building itself was vacant when that fire started. Now to a few big stories that we are following here in the Valley. Firefighters putting out a brush fire last night to right next to the freeway. It was spotted just off of the Loop 202 in McClintock. That is near Tempe Town Lake. Crews quickly able to put those uh, flames out, get those flames under control. We're still working to learn what may have sparked this fire. A woman killed after she was hit by a truck at a bus stop on Friday. This happened near rural and Warner roads. The man lost control of his truck, according to police, swerved to the other side of the road and then hit that woman who was sitting at a bus stop bench. She died on the way to the hospital. A friend of hers tells ABC 15 she was on her way to work. She carried a Bible with her and uh, very super friendly individual, caring and uh, had a great sense of humor. I wish she was late for work today. It would have turned out better. Tempe police say they are investigating impairment as a possible factor with the driver, but clarified that they have not placed that man under arrest as he is cooperating with investigators. Yeah, so incredibly sad there. All right. Well, happening today, former President Donald Trump, he's going to be in Arizona. He's hosting a rally in Florence at the Country Thunder Festival grounds. He's expected to speak at 7 p.m. Our crews will, of course, be there bringing you uh, the very latest coverage both on air and online. It's becoming a trend here in Arizona. Record breaking COVID numbers. Our state once again reporting the highest number of new cases since the pandemic began with more than 20,000 new cases added on Friday. The positivity rate is also stalled around 30%. So what that means is nearly one in three people getting tested, getting tested are positive for coronavirus. An Arizona school district also is canceling classes for the next week because of those rising COVID cases. The Hayden Winkleman district in Gila County telling us that they're closing the schools and will not be doing remote learning. They're just doing a complete shutdown. Classes are expected to resume on the 24th. More than 1,000 high school sports games now canceled and with playoffs around the corner, teams and the Arizona Interscholastic Association, they're scrambling to reschedule, but time is running out. We can only put so many games in those dates, so uh, a lot of the games, even though we would like to reschedule, aren't going to be able to be played. And we're told that the refs, they're also calling out sick in record numbers as well. Sticking with sports, now that it is legal, we are learning more about the Arizona Cardinals sports book. Construction is underway on the Great Lawn and the plans, they are massive. The two-story building is going to feature multiple bars, indoor and outdoor dining, massive video walls for watching games. It's going to make State Farm Stadium the only NFL stadium to feature a sports book, and it's expected to bring in a whole lot of revenue. Throw in the fact that we'll have the Super Bowl here in Arizona in 2023, which, you know, the 2022 season is all predicated on. Once, you know, Arizona has a year of sports betting under their belt and going into the next NFL season, that's when we'll start to see, you know, a more, you know, baseline, flatline rate as far as um, where the revenue is. And so to make that happen, the facility will be open before next season's kickoff. Big stuff happening. 
Yeah, it's an exciting time, Nohe. The NFL playoffs kicking off in just a few hours from now. The first game is at 11 a.m. when Tampa Bay, the defending champs, they go up against the Philadelphia Eagles. And, of course, our Cardinals will be taking the field for Monday night football once again in the major spotlight going up against the Los Angeles Rams. So we want to hear from you. We actually have a live poll happening right now. The question, how far will the Cardinals make it in the postseason. Do they win this one? Is it one and done after that? We want to know what you think. It's super easy to vote, too. Just go to abc15.com slash poll, and then you spin the wheel, and based on how optimistic you're feeling about your chances, you, you see how it all shakes out. What do you think, Mark? I think they... <laughs> I, say? Hope, I hope they... <laughs> They get a win go. today. I mean, it's a divisional opponent. They split during the regular season, so it really is a toss-up against the Rams. It's gonna so. be it's gonna be tough. It's yeah, gonna be a tough one. Is. So we just keep holding on to. They have done mm -hmm. better on the road, so we hope that holds. Did I sound confident? I, I, I'm gonna change. <laughs> They're going to beat there you go. the Rams coming up on Monday. There you go. Right, okay. So nice. one thing that some think will play a role in how far they go is experience. This year, the Cardinals have a lot of players who haven't ever made it to the playoffs. But the guys who have been there before say the team is going to be ready. Our sports director, Craig Fui, has more from Cards headquarters in Tempe. When it comes to the playoffs, let's be honest, there's 31 players on the active roster for the Arizona Cardinals who have never seen a playoff game. They've never been in one. On the positive side, the Cardinals are on the road, and they finished the regular season 8-1. and one. In fact, they have a plus 18 turnover margin on the road. That's only the second time in the last 30 years that a team has accomplished that feat on the road. But they do have some players that do have playoff experience, namely tight end Zach Ertz, who was traded here just three months ago with the Arizona Cardinals after going to the Super Bowl with the Philadelphia Eagles. Ertz was asked about how tough it is to acclimate to the playoffs and how difficult it will be for guys to settle in and just play their game. You know, everyone wants to make it bigger than a football game. And, you know, when I played on the Super Bowl, we had seven different TV stands on the field. And by the time the game started, everything was cleared out and you're just playing football again. So for me, in my experience, it doesn't take long for guys to settle in because once you're not thinking about the game, you're just thinking about your execution, your assignment. Um, that's all you're focused in on. You're not thinking about whether I make this play is going to win us the game or not. Zach was also asked about what's different about the playoffs. How different is it? And he said, you know what? I want to do everything I can to extend this season with this group of guys. I love being here. I love the guys on this team. This could be the last time we're ever together. In the NFL, there's so much change going on each and every year. And so for me and this team, I just love being around all the guys. And so I want to do everything I can to allow us to win one game um, and not let that thought or doubt creep in at all. With a one Monday night, the Cardinals will advance to the divisional round on the road probably against a Green Bay, Tampa Bay, or Dallas or could even be home hosting San Francisco or Philadelphia. We won't know that until Sunday night. With the team in Tempe, Craig Fui, ABC 15 Sports. All right, Craig, thanks. ABC 15, of course, is your home for all things Cardinals this wild card weekend. We're going to show you how fans across Arizona are gearing up for Monday night's win or go home matchup with the Rams. And we're going to bring you coverage from SoFi Stadium starting at 4 o'clock. Then, of course, stick around with us after the game for post-game coverage that you won't find anywhere else. Hearing how that all sorts out, I'm going to hope for a win Monday, and then I hope we face off against the Cowboys because I'll feel even better about that one. Meantime, make sure to send us your photos as you're decked out in Cardinals gear. Send it to share at abc15.com, and you might just see yourself in your gear right here on air. Meantime, event season is picking up in the valley, but is our hotel industry ready for all the tourists? We're going to take a closer look. And when it comes to the climate, 2021 was record-breaking in all the wrong ways. Next, we take a look back at the data and look ahead at what's to come. Welcome back, everybody. New data from NOAA and NASA shows severe weather events. They're becoming more common. Karen Kafa has the story for us now. From the North Star State to the Lone Star, the Big Apple to the Big Easy, 2021 was marked by weather extremes across the U.S. 
New reports from NOAA and NASA released this week reveal last year was the sixth hottest on record. Global warming is no longer an academic issue. The evidence of rising global temperatures witnessed throughout the country. This level of global warming uh, is impacting uh, weather and extremes at a local level. The report from NOAA documents 20 separate billion dollar plus disasters in the U.S. that resulted in 688 lives lost and total at least 145 billion dollars in damage. It's taking a huge toll, both human and economic. But many experts say the true costs extend far beyond those estimates. We know that the deaths from extreme weather and climate related events don't always fall within this category of billion dollar plus. And the impact is widespread. A Washington Post analysis found more than 40% of Americans live in counties struck by 2021's weather disasters, and more than 80% of Americans experienced a heat wave. Climate change is here. It's all around us. It's affecting everybody's lives all over the country. While it's unclear what 2022 has in store, scientists say more severe and more costly climate events lie ahead. We are going to see more and more intense rainfall. We are going to see more and deeper heat waves. Uh, it won't necessarily, we can't predict where they will be, uh, but, but we can predict that they will happen. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Well, we're coming up on 620 on this Saturday morning. Let's get a check of that most accurate forecast. It is going to be a warmer day. We're looking at a high of 72 degrees, but it's also going to be a cloudy day. However, we will stay dry. What you will notice are the winds. Clouds and radar right now showing us that we don't have any rain and few clouds out there right now, but we do have that wind advisory, lake wind advisory in effect across northwestern Arizona through the lower Colorado River Valley. That'll affect areas of Bullhead City, Lake Havasu City into Parker, and that is in effect until 5 o'clock this evening. Winds are already blowing around 28 miles an hour in Bullhead City. They're 20 mile an hour winds in Flagstaff already. We have light breezes here in the valley, but that's going to change over the next few hours here. Futurecast winds showing us the winds really start picking up the closer that we get to lunchtime, so that'll be the strongest winds across northern Arizona and here in the valley uh, leading up to lunchtime. Then from lunchtime on, the winds continue to our south, closer to 20 miles an hour in Tucson, Casa Grande, 15 mile an hour winds in Safford, and they will stay strong through those early dinner hours right around 5 o'clock this evening. Then they start to die down in the overnight hours. So just make sure that you've got your patio furniture tied down well outside because we could see those strong gusts here in the valley around 20 miles an hour at times as well. We've got a few clouds out there right now. Clear skies up to our north, but the clouds are going to continue to build as we move through the afternoon. By lunchtime, we'll have cloudy skies across the state. But again, we're staying dry here in the valley and across most of the state. Although later this evening, you could catch a sprinkle in the Yuma area, but that doesn't look to work its way any further into our state. Right now, temperatures are below freezing across the high country. 30 degrees in Flagstaff, 20s at the Grand Canyon, 26 in Heber, 23 in Sholo Prescott sitting at 27 degrees this morning. We're in the upper 30s in Payson. Safford is also at 36 degrees and we're in the upper 30s in Tucson to start the day off as well. We'll work our way up here in the valley right now, starting off mostly in the 50s across the valley. We are in the upper 40s in Maricopa, low 40s in Levine, but otherwise we're in the upper 50s in Glendale, Scottsdale, Mesa and Tempe this morning. Anthem sitting at 56 degrees. Great hiking weather. This is the season for the best hiking weather right now. That sun does doesn't come up until 732. We'll stay in the 50s through the 9 o'clock hour, 60s by 11, and then by 3 o'clock, that's when we work our way into the 70s. We're going to be in the low 70s across the valley today. 72 is that forecast high in Peoria, Glendale, and Tempe. 71 in Ahwatukee, Goodyear, and Maricopa, as well as Queen Creek. We'll see a mix of 60s and 70s to our south because of the winds. It'll stay in the 60s in Safford and Casa Grande. 60s in Payson and Sedona, north of the rim. We're staying in the 40s today. Day. And back here in the valley, our temperatures are pretty much going to be on repeat through the holiday weekend, low 70s every day, right on through Tuesday. But today's the only day that we're really going to deal with the breezes. And then we'll also have more clearing on Monday for that MLK Junior holiday. I will talk about another slight dip in our forecast and just the slightest chance for rain. Also, that's coming up in the seven day in just a little bit. No, hey, thank you. The free COVID test program now getting started. How you can take advantage coming up in the five things that you need to know to start your day. That's next.
The child tax credit was a major shot in the arm for families across the country, especially those who had maybe lost their jobs during the pandemic, made a big dent in helping care for their kids. But now it expired in December. So Stuart Willis from Asset Preservation Tax and Retirement Services is here to talk about what happens next. Hey, always good to see you, Stuart. Hey, thanks for having me. So first, let's talk about the difference that this child tax credit did make for those families over the last year. Yeah, absolutely. It was a it was a huge shot in the arm over the last year. I think uh, one of the big uh, changes is that you know people were getting that benefit throughout the year rather than having to to collect it during uh, during tax season in their refund. So it was this nice constant drip uh, to people that really needed it. Absolutely. So if they don't save the credit, I mean, right now it's not looking like it, but really if they don't, what happens? Well, like you said, in some cases, they're going to lose up to $1,600. Uh, not only that, it's going to revert back to yearly refunds. So you're not going to get it monthly uh, as you need it, but you're going to have to wait uh, and file for tax returns as well. And right now, you know, we run a pretty big tax office. We're seeing some people that haven't been refunded yet uh, from 2020. So it'll be really tough uh, to be able to get access to these, uh, you know, much needed funds. At the same time, it's extra income that people started to get used to, you know, that extra 300 bucks a month. So how do you suggest we start moving forward in the event that we're not going to get that money? How do you adjust your finances? Well, I, I think once again, you have to set a budget. And, you know, on our website, we have a budget worksheet. If you go to APSITaxes.com, uh, we have a really neat tool to be able to help people set budgets. But, uh, you know, we really can't forget the impact that this uh, tax credit had. It, it, you know, in the first month alone, it reduced child poverty by 25%. So it's really important for families to, to understand their budgets uh, and uh, to understand what they can do to improve their situation. Situation. I mean, I'll tell you right now, uh, it is a, a workers market here. You know, it's really tough to hire people. So I think a lot of times employees have the ability to go renegotiate their wages or go find other jobs because it is very, very difficult for employers to find uh, qualified employees right now. So right now, all the power's in the employee's hands. Absolutely. And just one of those things that we have to wait and see and don't count your chickens before they hatched, I guess, in this case. Stuart Willis, always with great guidance for us, and we appreciate your time this morning. No, thanks for having me. Appreciate you.